What is up everybody? The Hunter GT with the HunterGT.com. That's right. Go check out the website. What is going on today? The Vanquish 540 Pro Pack from Mine Lab is what's going on. That's right. The review video coming at you right now. I always like to check out the box on these review videos. So that's what we're going to do just for a quick moment. There it is. There is the faceplate. Park, field, and beach mode. Find treasure anywhere. Looks like we got a backlight. We got all sorts of designations along the top for iron jewelry trash and coins there we got an id right in the middle a little snail looking thing on the left we'll figure out what all that is what all these buttons say it has designations here it says this button is for pinpoint this is for volume adjust this is for power off and on we don't need that we got the hunter gt for that multi iq advantage why multi iq because with mind labs revolutionary multi iq technology you've got the combined power of multiple detectors in one all working for you at the same time simply turn on and go nothing goes undiscovered and no terrain is off limits silver gold jewelry park field or beach unearth the power of vanquish with multi iq there you go I'm not going to read anything else like that. Don't worry. It's the only time I'll make you suffer through that voice again. There you go. Pause it now if you want to read through all of that. Pack and carry. It is 2.8 pounds, 1.3 kilograms. It does come with a 12-inch coil and an 8-inch coil in this Pro Pack. So what comes extra in the Pro Pack? That right there. That small coil and the headphones. Those are the two things that come extra. It, the 540 by itself comes with the V12 coil right there. And then the V10 coil right here, which is 10 inches long. So V10, 10 inches long. V8, 8 inches long. V12, 12 inches long. I think you get it. I think you get it. So the V10 comes on the 440 and the 340 stock. All right, 440 and 340 stock. The V12 comes on the 540 stock. And then this Pro Pack has the 8-inch coil included. And the ML80 wireless headphones, Bluetooth, APTX headphones that come with the Equinox same exact headphones in this pro pack and then the 540 comes with rechargeable batteries whether you have the pro pack or not and the adapter here or the battery charger the 440 and 340 come with four alkaline batteries then we have the rain cover and the getting started guide so that is the box we will unbox it take a look at what's inside run it through the menu paces run it through some testing here like we always do on these hunter gt review videos so without further ado what do you say we open this bad boy up and check it out? All right, here we go with everything unboxed and laid out here. We'll start with the literature. You get a little headphone thing here, how to pair your headphones, a little safety packet there. You know, it's got all the safety guidelines and everything like that for each country. And then your getting started guide right there. No full manual with this. You will have to go online. It is in PDF format on their website so they do not add a full printed manual in the vanquish or the equinox boxes my equinox did not come with a full printed manual either so there is the usb charger bag right there it comes with the little usb cord and instructions for the charger the four batteries and your charger right there arm strap dust cover right here with the v for vanquish a little rainproof dust cover a couple of coil bolts with washers on it each one comes with two little teardrop washers uh the ones with this one are on the lower rod right now you just slide them in that little groove you see you'll see it you'll see it right there on bottom so there's the lower rod right there there are the v8 and v12 coils the v8 on the right the v12 on the left they both come with dust cover skid plates on the bottom there so right at a third difference between the two one being eight one being 12 so a third smaller the v8 compared to the v12 and there are the ml80 bluetooth aptx low latency headphones right here the exact same ones that come with the equinox 800 and then let's take a look lower arm cuff right here is adjustable on this get out of the way headphones um it is adjustable so you just pop that little thing there and now you can slide this in and out i have it all the way back i am six feet tall i have a six foot wingspan tip to tip for my fingers so i do have some longer forearms i keep it back and then you just pop it down and it's nice and locked in there and same thing with the lower rod the lower rod connects right and bottom there and it's the same little latch locking system right there so build quality right off the back it's not bad um it's not super super tanky anything like that the buttons are a little mushy but listen they're clicky they definitely have some tactile feedback but you can see they're a little bit mushy here and there but yeah it, it's definitely it's built 
it's built well. I mean, it's not like a tank build or anything like that. I don't. It doesn't feel super tanky, but it doesn't feel cheap like a toy. So kind of, it, it's built well. It, it's I'm, I'm giving it a, a well built seal of approval. They're a little mushy on the buttons, but you can feel they're nice and clicky right there. We'll go through the menu here in the next segment coming up. So there it is. I'll unbox. Those are the items that you get in the Vanquish 540 Pro Pack. Like I said, in the 540 regular pack, you do not get the wireless headphones. They are wired and you do not get that coil with the regular 540. It is Sans, the 8-inch coil and Sans headphones on that one. It comes with plug-in headphones. Everything else that you see there comes with the 540. The 440 and the 340 come with alkaline batteries, not rechargeable batteries right there. All right, let's go check out this menu on this Vanquish and run it through the paces. All right, guys, here we go with the menu setup. We'll go over the buttons and what each one of them does here. So right away, power buttons right here above the MindLab logo, a little power symbol right there on the left-hand side. We'll click that once, turns on, goes through the noise cancel setup. Familiar with that noise if you're an Equinox user there. And then we click it again and it turns right off. If we ever want a factory default, factory profile set it, just go ahead and hold it down, keep holding, keep holding. So you see FP show up, and now your factory default out of the box. All your notches will be gone. Everything will be back out of the box factory settings, basically. Okay, right above the power button here, we have the backlight button right there. We see that little backlight symbol turns on right next to it, right beneath the battery. You see the battery icon there, and you see this little light button turn off and on. And of course it glows red. We'll leave that on. Let's turn the sensitivity down. A little chatty indoors at full sensitivity. So that's your sensitivity wheel. It's kind of like a snail type wheel thing around that little circle. So you got plus and minus here. You go plus and all the way down to zero. Ten levels of sensitivity adjustment on the 540. The 440 has ten levels as well. The 340 has four levels. Of sensitivity adjustment on it okay so 10 on the 540 10 on the 440 the 340 has five sensitivity adjustments this has 10 volume adjustments we're fully maxed out right there and then nine eight seven six five four three two one and we can see right there there is no mute you can hear it real muffled it'll do like a bump 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 and it means you can't go any further so that's one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it does that noise when you're fully maxed out. So, ten levels of volume on the 540 and the 440, three levels of volume on the 340. Okay, so that's the difference. And then right here, so that's volume right here. We have our sensitivity adjustment right there in the middle. On the right-hand side here on top, we have our notch setting. So you see ED, um, that stands for notch, I guess. So right here, you do that, and you can see how it's cycling through with the little cursor on top. It's blinking. I can go all the way over to where it says negative 9 and all the way up to 40 clear on the other side. Now, if I want to start notching in to accept or reject, we hit the check mark X right here. And as you can see, now I'm rejecting them. If they are dark, solid color black, they are detectable. You are detecting the black sections. The clear broken sections or the blank sections, you are not detecting. Okay, so now I have all these funky notches in here. And, uh, you know, if you don't want those, you can always just remove them one by one or hold down this button until you see that FD when you are restarting it right there. So that is how you notch in and out and it works in all of the different modes. Right now we are in coin mode right here. You see the little coin symbol. How do we cycle through the modes? With this button right here, this little magnifying glass. So let's hit it. Now you see it's like a sword. That means we're in relic mode and you notice all the notches where they are in the default setting there. And then we are in jewelry mode there, which just notches out the iron section. You see iron here, and then you see from white to green, it goes through your mid-range to high conductors right there. So we have custom mode there. So that's coin mode, relic mode here, jewelry mode here, and then your custom mode here. So how do you save a custom mode? What's that? Factory custom mode's kind of cool because it actually brings in nickels 
then cuts out your pull tabs and brings in all your Indian head pennies, zinc range, and all your silver in here. So it's kind of a cool mode. Custom mode is actually what I use if I just want to turn it on and go coin hunting. It's kind of, I actually prefer it more than I do coin mode. But anyway, say you save all these notches in one of your modes. And this works in coin mode. You can do notches in relic mode. You know, you can, you can have any sort of notches you want to set up here and in jewelry mode say say you know you're in jewelry mode and you i, I want to hear everything and you know you, or you can notch in way down here and hear some of that stuff and then maybe remove something up here not that you would want to in jewelry mode this is just for you know i'm showing it off and so now let's go back up to the coin one see all that if i hold this down hold down my mode button it saves it st and it jumps me down you see it jumped me from coin all the way down to my custom mode now so now when i cycle through look coin looks like that but so does my custom mode it followed that exact same pattern i had set up for coin mode so now i can go set up my coin mode even different even a, a different pattern now and now i can have two different coin modes if i if i want to this one now let's say and then i bump back down and now i have this other coin coin mode in parentheses there all right so pinpoint button right here in the middle let's hit that when the bars line up on top and they fill and they meet in the middle that means you are right over your target a little bit loud sorry about that but I just wanted to show it off real quick. It's hitting pipes and stuff underneath the bed here. So this right here, this little horseshoe, that is going to be your all metal mode. So let's watch what happens. Look at all those notches and everything. What happens when we hit that? Boom. Everything comes in. Nothing. You're not missing anything now when you click that. Everything comes in. Now it is mode dependent. If See, I'm in custom mode. If I cycle and see, it, it, they're all full now. See how that's full? That's full. Watch what happens when I go back down to custom. That it's all gone. So anytime you cycle out of it with your mode button right here, it removes it. So you have to remember to go back through and turn it back on. As soon as you hit this button again, it's gone now. If I go back down, see, they're all in there. So hit that. Now you're in all metal mode. Now if I hold this down, see that little nail that pops up right here at the end of my thumb? That little tiny icon right there. Watch it again. See it disappear? Factory default, you're in high iron bias. So if you hold this down, now you're in low iron bias. And you have the little nail on there to signify that. So now you're in low iron bias. If we cycle back through, it takes it away, but it still keeps it in low iron bias across the modes and everything. Okay? So you notice it's not disappearing at all. It is either low or high across all all the modes so if you want to take it back to high you just do that high is off low is on we have a blank spot right here that is for your bluetooth audio you click this and you see it's flashing there with the bluetooth symbol trying to pair up with some headphones click it again and it turns off now if it's just the bluetooth icon solid it means you are only connected to bluetooth if it has the plus next to it that means you are low latency aptx low latency you definitely want headphones that have that plus when it's paired up you definitely want aptx low latency headphones okay i think that covers just about everything go read the manual online just in case i miss something that way you're ahead of the game absolutely go read that manual online go on the mind lab website read that manual read through your little quick start guide three four times make sure you understand it what do you say we go run this through some air tests some nail tests, some recovery speed tests, all that good stuff. Let's go do it. All right, we got it maxed out in relic mode right now. Usual suspects right here. Yeah, it's getting my camera. Look at that. At like a foot away. It's bonkers. So small, medium, large silver, small, medium, large copper, then a nickel right here, mid conductor, a ring, a lead bullet, and a small little 
eagle button so i'm going to try to keep the camera pretty still here if we can um it, nothing super scientific here on the hunter gt channel you know we're not breaking out digital scopes in uh our pocket projectors or anything like that so just a just a quick air test here silver dime relic mode maxed out it's supposed to be the deepest mode according to the manual so we're getting clear out to a foot easy on that Quarter. Looks like about 12, 13 inches before we start to lose it to the EMI and the, the cell phone interference. Is what it is. Is what it is. We're getting that out to about 14, I'm repeating there. That half dollar is out to a good 14. I can still hear repeatable hits. A uh, small copper. Dime, just a clad dime. Or no, penny, I'm sorry, penny. Clad penny, copper penny. Spit it out, you idiot. So we're getting that out to 13 inches or so. Indian head penny, a little bit of a lower conductor copper than that other copper penny. Yeah, we're getting really repeatable out to 13. And we're dropping off at 14 or so. Big old honkin' French Sintime copper. 12. Man, that's super repeatable at a foot. That's really neat. Really neat. 14. We're out to like 15. I need a yardstick. I need a yardstick. A nickel. Midtone. Here at Jump Tone. Midtone. We're out to a foot plus, and it's holding tone too. It's holding tone to about 14 inches. Let's try this thin 8K gold ring. 8K this ring. See, it doesn't know where it wants to place it. It's right on the edge of a tone break, it sounds like. But we're getting repeatable hits way out past a foot. Repeatable hits. Let's try this small little, small little eagle button here. Small little eagle button. Tiny sucker. We're out to a foot before it starts to really drop off. 11, no problem. Pretty good. Let's try this big old honking lead bullet here. This three ringer. Out past a foot, different orientations. I'm kind of moving it around in my hand, different angles. And we're getting it out past a foot, no problem. So there it is. Pretty darn good on the air testing. All right, recovery speed test. We have three silver dimes there. They are coil width apart, basically. There may be an inch inside the coil width there. So try to make it a true recovery speed test. If they're inside the coil, they are what separation tests right yeah and we'll be doing that next with the nail test so i'm in coin mode coin according to the manual coin has fastest recovery speed relic has the most depth jewelry is a nice balance between them a little more sensitivity maybe for jewelry a nice balance between them both and then custom is custom to whatever you save it so coin mode fast recovery speed it says let's listen one two three one, two, three. No problem with recovery speed. You can swing it pretty stupid and get pretty good results. All right, can it gold prospect? That's a question a lot of people are going to ask me via email or comments. Well, here we go. 0.3 gram picker right there. 0.3 grams, Ten, three tenths, three tenths of a gram. This right here is sub tenth gram. This will not register on a gram scale. You need a grain scale to get that little bad boy to register. So we are in jewelry mode now. It's supposed to be a little more sensitive. Jewelry mode, I think I'm at, let's see, 10, nine, 11, 12, 
eight is pretty stable. We'll go with level eight right here. No problem. Can lift it up about four or five inches before it stops. And look, no tricks, no tricks. Let's move it over here now. Let's see, Hunter GT must have a big gold ring underneath there or something like that. No, look, nothing there. Nothing there, scrubbing it, nothing there. It's not falsing, it's none of that crap. No BS here on my channel. All right, so it hits that, no problem. Let's try this little sub 10th gram one. I'm a little skeptical, let's see. Well, it's hitting it. It's a whisper. It's hitting it. It's definitely hitting it. It's pretty good for that big old coil. All right, we'll try it with the smaller coil as well here. We are in jewelry mode again. Let's, all the iron is in, no notches. No problem. Gotta scrub it. But there it is. There it is. All right, let's do a little nail board testing now. So here we go, we are in coin mode still because it has the fastest recovery speed. I'll bump it down to relic mode. I figure a lot of guys are probably gonna run relic mode because it's the deepest mode according to the manual. But for now, look in here, hear that iron. All iron, all right. Let's go ahead and pop down that Indian head penny, as you can see. One cent Indian head penny right there. That's what it's supposed to be this year, nail test. A lot of guys use big old silver coins or a nickel or, oh, it passed this test, no problem. It passed this, no problem. Yeah, it's a high mass object or a huge object you just put in. It's supposed to be an Indian head penny, a mid conductor, a mid to high conductor, Indian or a zinc penny. A zinc penny. You can run nickels or gold rings or dimes or whatever. Test out different objects if, if you print out this test. It's called Monty's Nail Board Test. Print out different objects, stuff like that. Check it out. It's not the end all be all of testing by any stretch. By any stretch. You're, you're never going to find this configuration right here in the wild again. Um, he found it, I guess, one day, drew it up, something like that. I don't know the whole story. Who cares? Um, but yeah, it's just a test to see how it does with surrounding iron and whatnot. So there we go. We got the Indian head penny in the middle now. No problem on number one. Let's try number two. It is not hitting it on number two. Number three. Loves the cherry pick. It's hitting it. You definitely investigate that. Let's try cherry pick number two. Nope. Can't even do that. So, number four. It'll cherry pick it, but it doesn't like the full sweep at all. So let's run down to relic mode. All metal on again. Let's try it. four. It's hitting it a little bit there now. Let's try two again. Still nothing on two. Three. No, nope, does not like three now in relic mode. It liked it in coin mode. Let's try it with the low iron bias. Nope, still doesn't care. Doesn't like it. Big old coil though. This is the V12 coil. Big old coil. So it likes it in the one spot there. So I, in my opinion, coin mode definitely worked a little better there. Coin mode definitely worked a little better. So let's move over to the number two spot, right there. Getting it there. Oh, let's turn iron audio back on. So you can hear the nails too. So no problem with number one there. Number four, the long nail there. 
or the dip down the barrel, whatever they call it. No, that's a hard test. Doesn't like two, and it should love number three here. Yep. So it's hitting number one and number three. That's with the big old coil. Here we go, coin mode with the small coil, the V8 coil. We saw with the simplex how well that SP22 and SP24, they really opened up the simplex. The simplex with the stock coil, it does not do well on this test either. It does not, I don't even think I showed it off in the review. It does not do well. Put those two small coils on, boy, it was a night and day difference, does quite well. I think it passed like six of eight on both, on both positions. So pretty good for both of those coils. So let's listen. Nothing but iron. We are in coin mode there with no notches, iron audio all the way in there. And as you can hear, nothing but iron there. So let's pop down the Indian head penny right there. One Indian head penny into the number one spot. And let's try this again, number one. Number three. Number two. Loves that cherry pick. Number four. I can cherry pick it almost all the way around. Number one's actually giving it trouble, and I don't know why. That's weird. Hmm. That is really weird. Hmm. I don't know what's going on with number one there. But it's passing just about every other one with a blip here and there. May not be perfect, but with a blip. Let's try that number two position. All right, so let's try it with the iron bias low. All right, we're gonna move down to relic mode now, right there, all metal on, iron bias on low. Again, let's move it back over to this position. Let's try it now in relic mode, see if that helps. No problem there. It's hitting it. Missing sometimes. It's missing, but it's hitting it as well. Okay, um, it passes like what, maybe six of eight? Pre pretty similar to the simplex with the small coil. So there it is, not blowing my, you know, not, not blowing my mind. I have seen this test where guys are using different size coins or different conductors. And, oh look, it's passing eight of eight, no problem, hooray. And it does, it, it will, simplex will as well. You put on a big high conductor as well. So that's pretty much the comparison. They both seem to do decent in iron. Are they your Amphibio? Are they your Equinox? Are they your XP Deus? No, they're not supposed to be enough with those silly comparisons on the internet internet already with thousand dollar machine versus you know seven eight nine hundred dollar machine versus a two three hundred dollar machine it's kind of bonkers you know and this pro pack it comes with the extra coil the extra headphones the 540 base package you know hundred dollars less so there we go guys there is the video hope you enjoy this review you want to pick one of these bad boys up i am a mind lab dealer and knock the macro bounty hunter fisher technetics xp all those companies hit me up the hunter gt at gmail.com or the huntergt.com, the website. Hope you enjoyed these videos. The Hunter GT signing off. I will see you on the next video.